section 6.6, .6, numbers 5, 7, 17, and 19. Here we're going to start from scratch and solve the quadratic equation. And we're going to use the following steps. First, we're going to write the equation in standard form, which means put it in ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0 form. And then we're going to factor it completely. Then we're going to apply the zero factor property, and then we'll check the answer. And in case you didn't see the last video clip, the zero factor property tells us that for any real numbers a and b, if a times b equals zero, either a equals zero, b equals zero, or both a and b equals zero. So we'll apply that within the solving of the equation. All right, so let's start with number five. b squared plus 13b plus 36 equals zero. So the first thing we want to do is get it in the ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero form. Well, this one already is, so step one's already done. Next thing we do is factor, and it's a trinomial, so it's going to be binomial factors, and we want factors of 36 that add up to 13, so we'll use plus 4 and plus 9. And now we're going to apply the zero factor theorem. Alright, so if the product of two factors equals zero, well either the first one equals zero, or the second one equals zero. So we set both equal to zero and solve for the b values that make it happen. So if you take away four, we get b is minus four. Take away nine, both sides, we get b equals minus nine. And so the solution to this quadratic equation is b equals minus four or b equals minus nine. And then as a quick check, we could put it right back in here and square it out and then you know plug in your value for b, make sure it really does equal zero and do that for both of them. I'm not going to do that here just because I want to have enough time in this video clip to do four different problems. So I'm going to leave the check for you guys. All right, the next one. Uh, first thing we got to do is get it into the equal zero format, which is the standard form. So let's um, start with the b squared here, and then we want to get all terms to the left. So we have to add 3b on both sides. That's going to give me b squared plus 3b equals 18. And then we got to subtract 18 because we want the right side to be zero. And notice I'm not lining it up underneath, directly underneath either one of these because it's not a like term. So they're just going to be written down all in series here. All right, so none of them are combining together. All right, so now we have a standard form equation. Second step is going to be factor the equation completely. It's a trinomial, so we're going to go to binomial factors. Factors of 18 that end up with a positive 3, and because it's a minus sign, they're going to be opposite signs, and they'll give us a difference of positive 3. Well, that means we want to use plus 6 and minus 3. And now we do the zero factor theorem. So either b plus 6 equals 0, which would mean b is minus 6, or b minus 3 equals 0. Add 3 to both sides, you get b equals 3. So the solution to the quadratic equation, b equals minus 6 or 3. And again, you'd want to just plug it in and make sure that it works as a final check. And let's look now at number 17. So we're going to use the same steps. So first we want to get this into the standard form. Now this doesn't look anything like the standard form. First of all, it's not equal to zero. Second of all, it has factors going on. It has a monomial times a binomial. Well, the standard form ax squared plus bx plus c doesn't look like that at all. So the first thing you want to do here is multiply it out, get rid of parentheses. All right, so we do 8b squared plus v, so we distribute the v, equals 7. And then we want to take away 7 on both sides so that we're left with a 0 on the right. And again, I'm not lining them up because they're not like terms, so I just write them down in series, like that. 
So we can either have 8 times 1 or 4 times 2 on the first one. And for the last terms, we want 7 times 1. And we want to have opposite signs, so the middle term is going to be a difference of plus 1. So let's write down our different possibilities here. And I'm using the shortcut method from back a uh, couple of modules ago. And we're going to look for factors that multiply out to give us a difference of 1. And you'll see that if we do 8 multiplying a 1 and 7 multiplying a 1, then we get a difference of a positive 1, which is what we want. So that means we want to use 8b and b, and then we want to use 7 and 1 in such a way that for the middle term, the 8 and 1 are multiplying and the 7 and 1 are multiplying. And they're going to give us a difference of positive 1 if we put the plus with the 1 here and the minus over here. So let's just double check it. 8v squared plus 8v minus 7v is positive v. Take away 7 equals 0. All right, so that checks out. Next step after we factor is the zero factor theorem. So we say 8v minus 7 equals 0, or v plus 1 equals 0. Well, this one's pretty quick. We could subtract 1 on both sides, and we get v is minus 1. This one, let's go through the steps of solving the equation. Add 7 to both sides. 8v equals 7. Divide by 8. And we get v equals 7 over 8. So our final solution, v equals either minus 1 or 7 over 8. And we have time for one more. If I work through it kind of quick. 9t cubed equals 36t. All right, first of all, get it into the equals 0 format, which means take away 36t on both sides. So we get 9t cubed take away 36t equals 0. And now we want to factor completely. We can pull out a t. And we can pull out a greatest common factor of 9 also. So if I take out a 9t everywhere, I'm left with t squared minus 4. Now it all equals 0. And that was part of our factoring step, but we're not done yet. So you always want to look at whatever is left over from the factoring and ask yourself, can it be factored more? This one can be, because we have difference of squares. t plus 2 t minus 2. So we have three different factors. Well, the zero factor theorem is going to be true if you have three factors, four factors, whatever. If a bunch of um, factors multiply together and give you a zero, then one of them's got to be a zero. So let's set them all equal to zero and solve for whatever makes that happen. And those will be, oops, forgot the equal zero there. Those will be our three possible values for t. So this one, if we divide by 9, we get t equals 0. And this one, if we subtract 2 on both sides, we get t is minus 2. And here, if we add 2 on both sides, t equals positive 2. So in this case, we ended up with three different possibilities. Now, sometimes you end up with one possibility, sometimes with two, sometimes with three depending on how many factors you got. And we are going to see some cases a bit later where no solution comes out.